Let's go back to uh, 1982. Paul Volcker had crushed inflation finally. It peaked at, uh, at what, 20%, two recessions. Uh, what was the mood? What was the conversation as all of you looked at what had happened, tried to figure out what had happened? Uh, were you, were you uh, uh, happy you'd gotten through it? Were you worried it would happen again? Well, we remember how difficult it was to get through it. Remember, we had inflation raging through the 70s, and it wasn't an easy time to get rid of it. And so we didn't want it to come back again, and I think Paul Volcker was there. I, I was at the 82 conference. What an amazing conference. What an amazing place. And I, I have good memories of that. But what I emphasize is keep up to this business. Don't get off track, and it should be okay. It was controversial at the time, but I think it was the right thing to say. Well, controversial to stay on track. In other words, to maintain a tight policy. It seemed, uh, and th at that point, People had learned that lesson. Inflation was enemy number one. You had to do everything to avoid getting it out of control. So let's fast forward. Four years later, we've got the CPI inflation almost as high as it was back then. Uh, what has happened, John? What went wrong? Well, I think we got off track again, quite frankly. The rates were quite low. Someone mentioned the Taylor Rule a few minutes ago. By that measure, we have inflation, 7 8%, whatever you want to measure it and inflation, uh, the interest rate's still below three. So I think we've had conference, conference out here, not like Jackson Hole, but the same kind of thing, and many of the FOMC members are saying, we've got to move, we've got to give up. I don't think it's a draconian move. It's really the kind of thing we've seen in the past, and I think we should be optimistic that it can cure the problem more easily than in the past because it's been a relatively new phenomenon. It's not seven years, it's a year and a half. So, John, uh, we, the Fed has hiked rates, what, about 250 basis points so far, but inflation is so far above that funds rate. Uh, and they are talking about pausing, maybe as high as 4% in the first half of next year. H have they gotten anywhere near enough uh, monetary policy tightening done yet? Well, I think if they move uh, in a way that's anticipated, another maybe 75 basis points, the next one, we don't know. There's there's some discussion about that. Then it will indicate that they're on the way. And I think what's most important now, and we've learned from history on this, learned from experience, is the more the Fed can communicate what the objective is. It would like to get back to 2% inflation. It needs to do this by a monetary policy that reduces inflation. It doesn't reduce the growth of the economy. reduces inflation. The better off we'll be. So that communication, that uh, stipulating about what the policy will be like is very important right now, and I hope the Fed does that. John, when it comes to where we're at in the markets, we're seeing extreme bullishness, not so much today, but we've seen the rally just continuing to build. Over the years, for you, what role have financial conditions played, and should the Fed be paying more attention to this or at least allude to that fact in order to sort of bring down uh, this bullishness that we're seeing? Well, they have to pay attention to the, to the markets, obviously. What they have an impact on the markets, and the markets have an impact on them. But I think that the more they are deliberative of this is what needs to be done, this is what's worked in the past, this is how we can do it, the, the more convincing it will be. And I think the, what the markets don't like is uncertainty about what's going to happen. There was more uncertainty today. I think that's one of the reasons why the markets went down. But the, the more that the Fed can indicate where it needs to be going. That's why these rules, uh, so-called Taylor rule, whatever you want to call it, are advantageous because it says, hey, we need to move a little bit further and hopefully that will cure the problem more rapidly than people expect. John, when you wrote about this in 1982, you flagged the scenario, right? Early deceleration risking the issue around credibility and then the, the, the risk of of really disinflation causing a recession. Given perhaps some of the policy errors before, does that mean we're at a point where recession is going to be maybe a likely cure for this bout of inflation? I don't think it needs to be part of the cure. What we've, we've experienced, if we let inflation build up over time, like in the 70s, it was seven years of higher and higher inflation. If we nip it in the bud, which I still think we can, then you don't have to have these negative effects that people are worried about. They're right to worry about because they've seen in the past, but the more that there can be 
a stipulation. This is what we need to do. This is good monetary policy. This will make the economy healthier. This will make a stronger growing economy. It hasn't grown that well recently, grown it even faster. And I think that's what we should emphasize. This is better for jobs. This is better for the economy. This is better. And also, I would mention the world economy. We have inflation all over the place right now. So, John, I've got a question from uh, one of your fans, uh, one of our viewers out there, who's uh, concerned. How can uh, Jay Powell avoid becoming the second? coming of Arthur Burns. We've had a dovish Fed tilt for a long time. Does this Fed have the fortitude to make the hard decisions, or do we risk a late 1970s moment where we declare victory on inflation, then inflation soars back again about six months later? It's so important to mention Arthur Burns, because Arthur Burns said, hey, it was, it's not monetary policy, it's something else. He convinced President Nixon to put wage and price controls, and it was a mess. He took the emphasis off what really needed to be done. So that's why, you know, Paul Volcker eventually made the adjustment, which was harder because of so many years with Arthur Burns. But we don't want that to happen. We want to be a more stipulative, more communicative, more indication of what the objective of the Fed is, and that's much unlike Arthur Burns. And I think that the way Jay Powell has treated this so far, the more he sticks with that. And again, communicating about okay. what needs to be done is very important. So at the last press conference, uh, uh, Jay Powell uh, mentioned that uh, the Fed was at neutral. I thought, well, he must have meant long-term neutral. It's hard to call this the neutral rate. But where do you see neutral, particularly in the near term, in the median term? Again, when you have this, <laughs> when you have a funds rate so far below whichever inflation measure you're looking at, how could we possibly call that neutral? Well, the word neutral, and that's why it's confusing, sometimes refers, oh, the inflation's rate 2 percent, the real interest rate's 1 percent, 3 percent. Sounds like that's neutral. But the thing is, we need to go above neutral. We don't need to go above that rate or get the inflation rate down to the 2 percent number. And with the real rate at 1, maybe 3 as well will steadily go to. But eventually, I think it has to go higher than that. I think that should be emphasized. It's not neutral in a sense. It's neutral at all times. Okay. So let's pin you down there, John Taylor. Uh, if you were sitting around that table, would you be saying, you know, 4% is not going to be high enough? Are you looking at something more like 4.5%, 5%, unless there's a sudden crashing in inflation, which a lot of people are not expecting? They're expecting inflation to stay, uh, even if it comes down a bit, persistently high. Yeah, I would emphasize that if it, we want to take actions to bring it down. And those actions will require somewhat higher rates. But is, is there, that's the reason for a rule or a strategy. It's going to be higher, but it depends on inflation. And when inflation comes out, which I think it will, then it can ease policy. But I think this contingency plan, this rule, this strategy is what should be emphasized. The Fed publishes these rules in its report, so it's easy to look it up and see what they're doing. Uh, they sometimes come in, sometimes they're out, but they're in right now, so it's easy to see what they're doing. And I'm sorry, John, I think I missed what you said, how high you think the fund rate's going to need to go. I'd say 5% is where we should aim. Okay, well. It's that, that, and that is not high by historical standards, that's for sure. No. You remember what it was in the 70s. But it's, it could be higher. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say absolutely 5 If inflation doesn't come down, then it may have to be higher. But I think inflation will come down and we can stick it at a level like that. But let's get there first.